Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com uh, and this is an episode of the Alex Merced cast. Now I just got done watching this movie on Netflix called The Platform and in this episode I'm going to kind of delve into it and talk about sort of what a lot of people assume are the themes of the movie and sort of what I took away from the movie. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend that you go watch it first. It's on Netflix. You probably have Netflix, so go watch it. It's a Spanish film. So you do have to read subtitles if you don't know Spanish. But it's very good. Very thought-provoking. Really good imagery. Really well done. So that's my spoiler warning. So... You've been warned. Okay, so now let's talk about first, what is the movie? So I'm assuming you've seen the movie, so you now know that the platform is about basically a bunch of people who are in this sort of kind of prison that they may have voluntarily involuntarily put themselves into where basically your ability to eat is determined by what floor you're on by what what sort of level you're at so because all the food tends to be start at the top level and then it kind of works down and basically everyone is eating the scraps of the previous floor and uh, basically a lot of people when you read a lot of the commentary on this movie they see this as a a commentary on capitalism saying you know okay here here's a class system and the higher classes are consuming and, and the lower classes are only uh consuming what's left over okay and making this a sort of some sort of indictment of capitalism's one cap sort of um competitive nature so in the sense that basically uh, people would compete to eat. They would kill each other to make sure that they could, you know, survive uh, this sort of, you know, dog eat dog kind of situation. Now, when I take a look at it, I, I actually I kind of get the opposite message. Uh, to me, actually, I see a lot of libertarian themes. I'm I do probably would venture the posit that the intention of the director, the intention of the writer, is probably more towards that cri criticism of capitalism. But if you look very closely at the movie itself, it's actually, it, I think, makes the case, or it basically illustrates the criticisms that libertarians have and the reasons why we sort of favor free markets and free exchange and the issues with sort of central planning. Okay, so basically what happens here is that you don't have a market, okay? So you basically have this just big, big, uh, plateau of food and this kind of introduces us to the idea of the tragedy of the commons so the idea is that that food there's no limit to how much you can have it's free okay anybody it's free for everybody to use now you know that if you're in that top floor if you don't eat the food someone else is going to eventually eat it after you so why not indulge as much as you can this is a problem we see with a lot of sort of quote-unquote public goods and, and and or you can say like an all-you-can-eat buffet okay uh, I know of one all-you-can-eat buffet that has crabs legs and the minute those crab legs go out they're gone because everyone goes there and they know that if they don't grab crabs legs the minute they're put out there they're gonna be gone so everyone grabs more than they probably otherwise would grab okay one because there's no marginal cost to taking another crab leg but there is the likeliness that you won't get a crab leg if you don't grab one now so the same thing here with the food. If you eat more food, there's no marginal cost. There's no additional cost to you. So you end up eating as much food as you can because not eating the food means, well, you have less food. Okay? So there's all upside, no downside to just gorging. This is what's referred to as the tragedy of the commons. This is not the case in a true market economy. Okay? Uh, in a market economy, there is a cost, there's generally a cost to everything, there's generally a cost to consume, okay? So in a free market, what would happen is the answers are, yes, the, the people in the top rung may necessarily have the most resources to consume more, but there's still going to be a mar there's still a point at which they're, the amount of money they're spending or the amount that they're giving up, as far as whatever resource they're giving up, the, whatever the price is, isn't worth the next marginal unit because you're full. So why give up your resources when you're getting no benefit out of the next portion of food? Okay, there's no reason to, there's actually a disincentive for you to gorge. And there's a, there's a higher likeliness that more food will get down to the lower level. So it's not, and this is where I think a lot of like people who are generally like who lean left kind of misunderstand. It's not a matter of trickle down. It's a matter of resource management and putting prices 
allow people to really kind of assess the situation of how much consumption. Now, yes, some people have more ability to pay a price and can consume more, but the fact is you still have to make that calculation. And even when you spend, you don't automatically just have more, okay? So you also have to think about how can you attain more resources, which means what can I give to someone else that they're willing to pay for? What value can I provide to others, okay? There's no, here, there was no situation where some, anyone along the way is going to make more food. The only real food they could provide each other beyond the food that was on this, on this table was, um, you know, themselves. Okay, so basically, uh, there was no way to produce value for others to an extent. I mean, to some extent, people had one good with them and can try to use that good. But the only people they could really interact with was the person they were assigned with on the floor. This is very different than, like, again, a market economy where you are free to associate, you are free to figure out who you can produce value for to attain resources, to grow your lot in life, to grow your position. While here, your position, your floor, was completely arbitrarily, desi arbitrarily chosen by uh, bureaucrats, by, the, by some uh, imaginary elite that we, did never, we never get to see. That's more like a government who sits there and says, okay, well, we like these things, so they're gonna get the tax rates, they're gonna get the subsidies, and we don't like these things, so we're gonna tax these things, we're gonna make these things against the law. And, you know, it's where you end up can oftentimes just be arbitrarily decided by some bureaucrat versus on your own, on, based on your own merit. And it's not just about merit, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't think that, hey, a free market's gonna be some pure meritocracy because merits subjective uh like anything else it's not this there is no objective merit okay you could be the most brilliant scientist in the world but if you're a jerk and you don't get along with people um you're not necessarily gonna you're gonna find yourself limited as well okay in a market environment it's not it's not just about who's sort of like the best at doing the thing it's a sort of a more holistic who mix of features that are going to determine sort of your success because you may have something to offer but if people if you don't know how to build community to connect with people no one's going to be interested in what you have to offer or or have a chance to know you enough to know that you have it to offer so in a free market since there's no one forcing someone else to give you anything you have every incentive to get along with as many people as possible to to inc encourage positive uh, relations with other people in the sense that hey i know people i want to meet as many people as i can i want to be as valuable to them as i can because it improves my opportunities it improves my relationships that's a market economy you notice i'm not using the word capitalism i don't like the word capitalism because capitalism is like a rorschach test in the sense that you know you show you say the word capitalism to a libertarian like me i'm thinking free markets but then I show, I say the word capitalism to someone who leans very left, they don't, they're not thinking free markets. And this is where it causes a lot of the confusion in the discussion. They're imagining this sort of system where business has corrupted the bureaucrats, which is something that libertarians aren't fond of either. And, but this is just inherent with a system of sort of private ownership without and ignoring sort of these challenges of the tragedy of the commons and all these things. But they just imagine that there's this system where basically all the, the doors for upward mobility are controlled by some elite who have control of not just government but of business and basically there's this this just this class that just has created this sort of permanent uh sort of fra fracturization as a libertarian i don't necessarily say that's impossible but again the to the extent such a thing can occur requires an imposition of force and basically that's what governments are they are a monopoly of force so basically to the extent that any kind of elite uh co-opt this government this monopoly of force is because the power it has the power to do so and really at the end of the day it just comes down to all us as individuals and our consent of such a thing the problem is is that when we get to a point where people are challenging the status quo we oftentimes get so confused in what we're challenging Okay, we, we think it's like, okay, we just need to challenge, like you have all these people who just like, they want to challenge this whole concept of capitalism. Okay, so then you, you people start creating this like hostility towards enterprise, towards 
you know, mutual exchange, which are good things. These are the things that allow more people to thrive. Um, not against sort of the things that prevent us from being able to lift ourselves, which are things like, which is essentially protectionism at many levels, in and out of government, where people try to put barriers to protect what they have and prevent others that what they have. And also just a general willingness to get along with each other. And again, those things all dissipate when politics becomes stronger because elections become more decisive. I mean, there's much more on the line. So there's much more on the line to try to convince 51% of the, of the population to hate the other 49 because that's how you win elections. So the nature of a, pow of, um, of a growingly powerful government is going to result in much more a much more divisive dynamic, which is going to cause all these other kind of more corrupting elements to kind of occur along with all sorts of other things again you, you know it's, there's no one single cause there's all sorts of different sort of cycles going on but yeah so in the sense when i see the movie i see again it's just people who really have no no autonomy they don't have no freedom to travel they have no freedom to exchange with each other they have nothing to exchange with each other each item each person is only allowed one item they're not allowed to hold on to any of the food there's all these sort of real arbitrary rules that are not enforced by any kind of error consent. Again, the difference between like me going to a bar that I like, let's say, the reason I don't break the rules is because I don't want to be banned from the bar. Okay, so I'm not. It's 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 because I want to consensually be there, and I want them to consent to let me be there. Is that I, I follow the rules. They don't have the ability to like shoot me to, but government does have the ability to shoot me if I don't follow the rules. So it's a difference in that enforcement mechanism. This is an, so in the platform, the enforcement mechanism is, is generally force. Um, even if it's not necessarily someone shooting you, um, the fact that if you hold on to food, they'll boil you alive or freeze you to death. Okay. Um, it's pretty, pretty rough. Okay. So then you have like, so you're, 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 you get double threats. You can't go up because They've made it physically impossible. Um, you can't hold on to food, so those, you don't have any of these mechanisms that normally would, in a market economy, uh, improve things. This is it is more like in a prison. And in a prison, market economies div and even in even in a traditional prison, you actually can have a market economy develop because at least people can associate with each other. That is not even the case in the platform. So it's truly like people being isolated from each other, um, given really little resource to do anything, little autonomy to do anything with all their fates being determined by some sort of central authority imposing their will by force. This sounds to me like a government dystopia, not necessarily a capitalist dystopia, because even if you did have, you know, evil business overlords, they'd still want to sell stuff. Okay. So they'd still want more, more people than not being able to be able to buy their stuff. And that's kind of the thing about capitalism. Like even in the worst case scenario, the, the worst, the businessman still wants people to be not doing poorly because then they can't buy their stuff, okay? Even though most businessmen, or especially most entrepreneurs, they start out, they don't start out trying to do the business that's going to make the most money. They start out building a business and a product that they care about at great sacrifice. Oh, yes, people can be like, well, people go into banking because they're going to make lots of money. There are people who actually get into banking because they're passionate about it. I've met them. And it, it, there is reasons to be passionate about banking. It's actually a really interesting topic if you understand how it all works and a lot of the economics behind it. It can be really interesting um, to be able to sit there and find help people who have resources they want to invest, connect them with people who have great ideas to invest in. Um, but yes, you do have those people who are just looking to turn a quick buck, who try to scam people um, at all levels, though. It's not just... In business, you see it in government. You see it in you see you see churches that, that try to scam people. You see, um, you know, the the willingness of some to take advantage of others is not something unique to enterprise, um, and it's but it is something that a market economy can at least have some incentives to to limit. Okay, whether it's be because, hey, again, I, I want to follow the rules because I don't want to get kicked out of my favorite bar or I, hey, I want to keep my job. So I'm going to do some work or I want to make sure my customers keep coming to my business. So I, I, I have a, a reason to pay attention to their needs. 
um, versus, you know, compulsive association where basically, hey, if you have to give me food and who cares about how I treat you and whether you get anything out of your relationship with me, if you have to give me food, if you have to give me this, and if you don't, you're going to get shot. So it's a different, uh, I think, a very different picture than a lot of people realize. And when I see the platform, I see a, a, a extremely sort of, you know, a picture of sort of a, a, a dystopia that is what us libertarians are generally trying to work against. Because we want a place where people can freely associate with each other, where people can, can do what they want, trade with what they want, accumulate resources, not be limited in the resources they have until someone gives them the permission to have them. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com, just general libertarian dude these days. Uh, you can go find more information about me at alexmerced.com. Subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Leave a comment. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just look up Alex Merced on YouTube. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you guys very much. Have a great day and enjoy.